switch pulled up real quick. Come on, come on, come on. Twitch slash me. Put that over there. Grab one of these. Mute that guy. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, right. Uh, I just lost what number we were. Jerk. I gotta find it. So I don't think the website posted the the last episode. So we're two thirty one, and I I don't know why that is. Hmm. Give me thirty seconds, and I'll see. Yeah. Posts, and then we can. Published. It was published. It might snow all day tomorrow. Publish. Published. So stick to top of blog. Fine. Update. Snow's Maybe. getting closer. Not snowing anymore here. I guess, look, that's a good thing. So they don't cancel school. Mm. You never want to cancel school because then you got to make it up. Yeah. Have you already that. elapsed your given snow days? No, we have we have zero, so that's okay. good. Look, we know what it is. If if even though Easter Monday is not a day off, if we don't use our snow days, Easter Monday is a day off. Nice. So you know that. And then the day after Memorial Day is number two. So I mean, now that you know that, this should work. I don't know why in thirty is not updating this, but I guess we'll give it with the DNS. I guess. Let it do its thing. Anyway, 231. There it goes. Okay. Okay. You ready? <clears throat> yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode. Uh, I just lost it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop, 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 stop. Let's start over. All right. You ready? Okay. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the security podcast here on the In30 Network. It's episode 331. My name is Haim Cohen. Tom is right there. I'm over here. Hi. And Tom's ear is down there. Yes. Okay. You, you can't see it on stream, though. That's that's important. He's record. He Tom's ear is currently using a fifty-two thousand dollar Mac Pro <laughs> rack mounted. <laughs> yes. With two dual, uh, what is it, six thousand dollar stands? Yep. And a four hundred dollar four K camera. We did have to turn off hardware rendering on Firefox, uh, just so Streamlabs OBS could grab the window to you know put it up on Twitch. So getting good use out of this. Also, I play Minecraft. So while running Slack and Chrome. <laughs> Whoa! No, no, no! Like I can run Slack and Chrome, but not Minecraft. I usually have to pick one or the other when I'm running Minecraft. I mean, this okay. is this is Slack we're talking about. Unfortunately, only a few people got that joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but but anyway, we went to start off the new year. We are in 2020. Uh, and we we said, nobody's going to listen to our back catalog. If you have, congratulations. We salute you. Come find us. But I'm assuming most people are not going back to episode one and starting over. So we said, you know what? We're not going to start over 100%, but we're going to do some very basic episodes uh, leading up to it. And obviously when we get news, we'll interject it. But the idea is it's 2020, let's start over. And I think our first main topic before we do anything with security, like literally before we talk about anything else, the first thing you need is to have a backup of your computer, the backup of the files. And we do not want to move on to anything else just in case until you have a backup. Yeah, it's it's super important. You're not going to realize how important it is until disaster strikes. And that's, uh, frankly, that's the worst part about backing up is that you just don't think about it. Everything's running fine. Why Why would you back up? Why would you have you know six months of savings put away? Why would you do any of this stuff? It, it just doesn't matter, right? Yeah, you know, you're right. It doesn't. And it literally buys you nothing. It's actually a major detriment, both in cost and time. And backing up is just a pain. But... If you need it and it's not there, it's way more painful than if you went through the the minimum amount of effort to put it in place before that disaster struck. So the goal is to give you some backup ideas. Uh, some are paid, some are free. 
Obviously, the paid ones are a little bit better. The free ones are still very good. And we'll just we'll just go right in. And and I think the first thing that you want to understand is all the computers now, whether you're running um, you're running OS 10, you're running Windows 10, you're running Linux, they all have some backup system associated with it. They they understand uh, they understand how important it is, but they need a separate hard drive. So my, our recommendation is let's go to any big box store, go to Amazon, go to Newegg, Fry's, whatever you have, Micro Center, and buy a big hard drive. Probably a two, probably, I don't want to, what is it, like double the size of your current hard drive? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Like, don't don't go outlandish. Don't drop like 500 bucks on a giant SAN or, or a Synology system. Like, honestly, get whatever comes in a case and looks like it'll sit somewhere on your desk. Like, I have used tons of Western Digital in the pro, uh, products in the past, and I can give them my personal recommendation. I haven't used any recently, but they've always been really solid. Um, there's, there's one... I know we usually don't call out vendors on the show, but stay away from Seagate hard drives. They they might be cheap. They might look nicer, but generally they're kind of on the low end of unreliable. It's not going to blow up in your face if you do have one, but uh, it's definitely not the best option out there. The issue is you're going to write to this hard drive once an hour. Or you're going to let the computer do it once an hour, once a day, whatever it is. And you're not, you, you have to test it. Like once a month or every week or whatever it is, you have to like actually do some work with it. And you don't want to, when disaster strikes, to be like, uh oh, none of this ever worked. So you want something that's slightly more reliable. And like you said in the beginning, it costs money for something you'll never see. So get yourself a hard drive that you want. A spinning hard drive is fine. I'm not going to like say you have to go SSD. I would highly recommend you go SSD. It is more reliable and everything else, but there is a cost associated with it. So a spinning hard drive, one of the Western digital passports that are, that are portable, that's good enough. Get some Velcro, Velcro to the back of your laptop, whatever it is, or, and go from there. Yeah. It like, the the reason we want to test our backups is anyone can take a backup, right? It's like that old Seinfeld skit. Anyone can take a reservation. It's the holding that matters. So you can write as much data as you want to this hard drive. You can make sure it's got the most bulletproof backup system imaginable. But unless that backup system is automatically testing itself every so often and automatically making sure that the stuff you backed up is actually readable and retrievable at the end of the day. It's not actually a backup. I've actually read horror stories of companies that have like, like I, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars in backup equipment sitting in their data center, running, backing up everything, disaster strikes. And they're like, it's cool. We got backups, man. We've got this on lock. So they go to restore. They had never done it before. And it turns out, you can't actually restore the backups because of whatever bug or maybe it was running bad data or null data and everything looked like it was working, but it just didn't. So every so often, um, you know, a lot of software is built to kind of take care of itself and do these checks automatically, but it's always good every so often to give it a once over and just like restore the, the file sitting on your, desk, uh, on your desktop or in your downloads folder. Like you don't have to do a full system restore, but just make sure you can spot check it and you can actually get files back out of your backup because that's really the important part. The backing up, you know, I guess it's kind of important, but the restore is really why you went there. So I'm just looking at Amazon, a Western digital four terabyte portable drive, whatever it is, is a hundred dollars, $94. Sounds good to me. I know, again, yeah. it's one of those, I don't want to spend the money, but with all of security, there's going to be costs associated with it. Nothing is just 100% free. There'll be free software, but it's inconvenient. Here you have a system on your computer uh, that will that will say, we'll just back up your whole drive for you with incremental backup. You plug it, you play it in. You have to make sure it's on. I've had that problem where when you restart whatever it is that you have to like unplug it and plug it back in to make sure it's on but all of that it's there and and you have to just make sure it works so 100 bucks is probably worth it and it's probably the simplest solution yeah and i i, I know some of you are super technical out there you might have JBot arrays full of disks. You might be doing crazy stuff with ZFS. You might be raiding file systems together. Know that raid is not a backup. 
if it if your data exists in one place and that that does count multiple drives if it's the same file system it is one place raid is an uptime solution it is not backup trust me i have made this mistake and i have lost a whole lot of data um because when your raid rebuilds there's no guarantee it's going to rebuild properly and that's when your backup comes in i made this mistake and i lost six terabytes of of like minecraft server stuff like a bunch of stupid stuff but I lost it and it was important to me at the time and it just vanished into thin air. There's nothing I could do. I couldn't get it back. Um, so, you know, raids nice for uptime, but it's certainly not a backup. Your backup needs to exist in two, but preferably three places. What is it? Leo Laporte says all the time. It's uh, three, two, one, but I don't know if he said that, but the idea is three, two, one, three backups, two different mediums. So cloud or, uh, uh, the hard drive and then something else, a CD-ROM, a, a different, two different mediums, and then one online somewhere else, offsite. Yeah, and that's that's like the bulletproof solution for backup, right? Because let's say let's say you back up to a hard drive, and that backup hard drive you try to restore, and it turns out something happened, and the hard drive is actually dead, or it dies in in the you know process of you trying to get your data back. If you had something else, if you had backups on tape or discs or whatever, at least the important stuff, then you can always use that separate medium to get it. But I think more important and really, you know, now that we don't have <laughs> CD or DVD drives in our systems anymore, um, I, I think cloud backup solutions are actually a really novel solution. And I, frankly, you don't have to pay a ton of money. Uh, if you wanted to use the free Dropbox account just to store the super important data uh, or, or you know, make sure you encrypt stuff first. Like, don't like put all your financial data just out randomly on the net somewhere. Make sure it's protected so you can get access to it. Um, that's totally fine. And these companies, uh, they actually pay people. They have people on staff, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, ensuring that your data doesn't just randomly go away. And if it does, yeah, it's happened. Um, and there's really. Not much you can do to guard against that, except using a bunch of different cloud providers. Uh, I know there are applications out there, I, I can't recommend them because I haven't used them, that kind of shard and spread your data all over different free file storage providers, but that's, it's it's a little hacky. They raided the file storage providers. You don't want that. Yeah, yeah well, it's, some, it's a little weird. Somebody, somebody said, get one of the Synology systems. They're like 150 for the two drive bays. And this is a little advanced. Put two two terabytes or two four terabyte systems and do it on RAID zero, which is uh, complete mirroring. So RAID one, one. RAID, RAID one. one, yes. Yeah. Sorry, RAID one. RAID zero doubles it. RAID one is a copy. Yep. And and do it that way. And I have something like that. I have a Synology box downstairs with four drives on, but it's not RAID. It's whatever Synology has BTFS. Um, and I can lose one hard drive. Now I had a, a UPS system. That's the the thing, the battery that if the computer, the power goes out, it stores. It just started power cycling. So it would turn on, get everything spun up, and then turn off. Get everything spun up. This went on, and my Ooh. dad lost an SSD because of this, and we couldn't figure it out. I said, "Oh, he must have done this wrong," because an S SSD is just generally don't uh, die. So I took it home with me and it did it to all my systems downstairs. And I did lose a hard drive, but because I lost one, um, uh, Western Digital warranted it. I plugged it back in. Synology did all the good stuff. But anyway, the point is get something for that. That's going to keep basically your computer running. And unfortunately, you got to buy one for every computer that you own. Again, that that's why we say it's, this, it's, a, it's a sunk cost. It's important, but... At the end of the day, it is a little annoying. So, yeah. And if if you're lucky enough to have a laptop and that's your main computer, you've got a UPS built right in. Uh, I mean, usually batteries do age, and if you can pull out that power cord and your your battery is charging your laptop and it shuts right off, just just go replace the battery. Yeah, I know it's annoying. I know they're expensive, like almost weirdly expensive laptop batteries are, but yeah, just just. It's it's a UPS. It's better than buying a giant battery. Just buy the tiny one and stick it in your system. So okay, so now you have your your hard drive, your your main computer, uh, completely imaged. 
uh, make sure you do, like we said, make sure you go to on Windows. It's backup and uh, backup and restore or just uh-huh. Windows backup. Make sure you choose the options. You can go through the options. Make sure you do it. I do know that if you're running a Windows 10 machine, it does flash and flash and flash and flash to say you got to do this. So go to the Windows Security Center. Go there. If you turned it off, uh, make sure you turn it back on. On Mac OS 10, they have uh, Time Machine. You can just click in there. You can set up. It's like one button. It says set up and it just does it all. Time Machine is magical. It is it is the most magical backup program I've seen. And frankly, it has inspired a whole lot of software to get a whole lot better. Uh, I, I will be forever indebted to what Time Machine did to backup software. So, I mean, I heard people complain about it because if you get something bad on it, it just constantly but oh, the yeah. idea is it's backing up your system so if you so so it does and it does incremental backup so you can go back and and it magically deletes when it's done it doesn't give you any weird error message it just works and if your computer dies i have done i've gotten a new computer it says restore from time machine backup yes please and magic magic happens so it is so nice it is just so nice to be able to plug in your new machine it prompts you and it says hey are you migrating yeah as a matter of fact, I am. here's the backup drive. Here's the credits to get into it. And it just sucks it all down. It's magical. You, you boot up your new machine. It's exactly like your old one, except faster and better. So, and Linux is rsync and I've used rsync. For, for Linux, I'm going to recommend, because rsync, yeah, you can script it. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. But I'm going to recommend a new utility. We've talked about it before. If you are a command line hero, if you love Linux, Restic. Restic is backups done right. I personally use it on my system, uh, on all of my systems, uh, each and every day. It's it's croned out. It runs once a day at 3 a.m. It has, uh, like, you can throw stuff on a local hard drive. You can throw stuff to cloud providers. You can throw stuff to Dropbox. Like, it works with all of these things and can work with all of them in concert. If you want your backups on your hard drive happening every 30 minutes and then your cloud provider once a night, you can totally do that, and Restic just works. It is super cool, uh, and actually, really secure. Uh, there's a, a security guy, um, Filippo, uh, that now works at Google on the GoLang project. That gave it his stunning recommendation, which is, yeah, this seems really nice. Uh, so I can I can 100% recommend Restic. Uh, it does work on Windows and Mac systems, but again, it's it's going to be command line only. It's going to be technical, and it is not for anyone but advanced users. So what's the non, is it rsync still? Um, for for Linux, like if you're just using Ubuntu, just open up that pane and type in backup. There's going to be a program called backups. Uh, I actually use this for years, great. Uh, it's, uh, it's Deja Dupe, which is kind of a GUI front end to a program called Duplicity, but it does everything like incremental backups. Occasionally it'll do uh, its own restore test, which is super nice. Um, it will do uh, full backups after a certain period of time just to keep things fresh. Um, and it does work with just about everything. Uh, I know they can back up to Google Drive, network servers, different hard drives, uh, Nextcloud if you've got an instance of that. Uh, so yeah, just in, in Ubuntu uh, or even in any distro of Linux, if you install Deja Dupe, it's called backups. Just set it up and turn it on. There's like a little, a big button right at the top. You just flip it to on and you're, you're done. So we're halfway through. Let's, you know, t- let's, let's pivot and say, okay, so you don't want to spend $95. Um, I, if you have a hard drive lying around, I'm not going to necessarily recommend that, but it's better than if you, better than nothing. But if you don't want to spend the money and you want to go the free route, the first thing you have to figure out is what do you need to back up? because there's online cloud solutions for all of this. And you'd be surprised how you can do this. It's not that hard, but if your system crashes, you, you're still gonna have to reinstall Windows. You're still gonna have to reinstall all your programs, install all of this, and then get your important files back. Whereas what we told you, we'll just, you hit the one button, it, you restore, you come back three hours later, everything's pretty much in the same spot and, and you're good. Um, so the first thing you want to do is what are you using for? So the three big ones are Dropbox, uh, Google drive and, uh, one note, not one note. I'm sorry. One drive. And I've used all three and I'm not a big fan of Google drive. If you're using Google, you have a Chromebook, you have an Android phone. It's cheap enough. Google drive will work. You put the files that you want in there 
it will it will do whatever you need to do. Dropbox, I used to like. My wife uses it. She really likes it. It is expensive. It is probably the most expensive out of the bunch. It's it 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 is way better than than Google Drive. And finally, if you have different different accounts, OneDrive is surprisingly really good. And if you pay uh, for Office three sixty five, or you get it from work, or your kids get it from school, it is free. It comes with a terabyte, and it allows you to have multiple accounts, which I really like. So you have your work stuff; it'll back up. It'll back up your school stuff, and they they assumingly won't touch. And you can go from there. But that's really just for file backup. It's the files. It's a folder. You put stuff in the folder and it's yep. there. So I like those three. Uh, iCloud works also. If you have a Mac, it's also just as cheap. But again, all the problem with all those, they are not encrypted. That's for a different show. They're not encrypted. They just will back up your main files. If if you're a student and you're working on papers, especially, I, I used to work at a, uh, a help desk at a college, and the amount of like term papers and end of year papers and stuff that people spent months crafting these projects lost because they had it stored on like a single flash drive, I, it just it breaks my heart every time I see it. Now, people have come to me, you know, with with their broken laptops, and they said, yeah. I, I really just want like the last day of my term paper. And it's like, okay, sure. I, I mean, I get it. I'll try to recover your data for you. And they said, yeah, if you don't, it's not a big deal. Got it in Dropbox. Cool. That is great. That is so fantastic. Uh, like super important stuff that you're working on, work stuff, um, if your company will allow it. Uh, look at your employment agreement and contracts and all that stuff. But the important stuff that you're actually working on, the stuff that you cannot afford to lose, uh, you just throw it in OneDrive, throw it in Dropbox, throw it somewhere that's not just on your computer. If it exists in one place, it is not backed up and it is not safe. Look, it's, uh, I always tell my students now, please save all your files in whatever backup service that you want. So we use, we used to use Google Drive, save it right there. If you, if you want, use Google Docs, write your paper. Um, let it do its thing. And then when you're ready to print it, go or format it the way your English teacher wants it, take it, go there. If you're, I mean, GitHub, right. GitHub backs up the code, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you so if you've GitHub. got code and you've got GitHub and GitHub offers private repositories now, uh, GitLab has offered private repositories for a while. Um, you could just use one of those to store your code. I know I've got a lot of stupid code that I write, uh, stuff that's not really important, but I want to make sure I've got it later just for reference. And believe it or not, I use it a lot. So you have that. The problem is, again, your computer gets wiped out, your papers are gone. The next thing are photos. Um, all all your, all your the phone providers, so uh, Google, uh, Google Photos, Apple Photos. I've actually liked Amazon Photos a lot. Uh, to use, they will all back up your photos. Most people now, I'm assuming, are taking all their photos on on their phone. So you just turn on the backup service there. You run the little installer on your computer, and you're gonna have your photos in the cloud, all backed up, and you don't have to worry about anything. I do have to say, Google Photos is magical. Um, they do a lot of machine learning stuff, which could creep you out. And I totally get that argument, but if you like. I, I regularly reference a picture of a car crash when I'm telling like a story of the time that some dude stole a truck and blew up the side of our car and they're like, oh my God, that sounds horrible. And I can just search car in Google Photos and it brings up photos of the crash. It's actually super, super well done, very well implemented. So they do that. Their OS X uh, Google, uh, Google backup app is a hot mess. Yes. If you, can, if, you, if you can deal with that. Again, if you're just taking photos on your phone and you're just letting it go there, that's fine. If you're a photographer with an SD card like I am, what I just learned to do is I bring the photos, I import them, and I just manually update them because I'm. it's not worth letting it do a cron job and find it, which I understand. But I wish it worked. Amazon's file thing is also magical. It is also amazing. And if you have a an echo with the little screen, it, it just like the Google home does it. It's a digital display. It does the same type of things, but it's not the primary one. People don't have, they don't have their Amazon app on their phone to, to do all this. So again, 
it doesn't hurt to back up again. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything, especially if you have Prime. So, but those are for basically uh, photos and they work really well. And the compression on Google Photos, we printed them both out. We printed two photos out at a five by seven. We did this three times. We took three different photos. I printed out the raw, I printed out the JPEG and I printed out the compressed Google photo on three different photos as a five by seven. We could not tell the difference. We could not do it. And when we did have a preference between the JPEG and the Google photo, the Google photo won out. Wow. So, so if you're saying, oh, it's going to compress it and I care about, no, you're not going to care. It's, it's fine. Again, you have your first $100 backup system that backs up everything. Let this be the backup of the backup, that second backup or that third backup. Google Photos is fine, especially after you lost everything to know it's in the cloud and it's good enough, you're fine. Yeah, so let's dig into full system backup, stuff that's automatic, stuff that's in the cloud, stuff that you're gonna pay monthly for. There, There is a cost associated with this stuff. Um, there has been a lot of a lot of churn uh, in this um, in this field recently. Uh, I used to use um, Crash Plan by Code Forty Two. Uh, Crash Plan got basically turned into a business only service. Um, I'm I'm super bummed about that because I used to use it for everything. They had a Linux app which worked decently enough. Um, I, I can't I don't like it, but it was fine. It did its job. Um, but there's basically two big players in that space right now. Um, I want to say, um, yeah, so Mosey also got acquired by Carbonite. Um, so Mosey at home is no longer a thing, but Carbonite is still a thing. Uh, they just got bought by another company. I don't know what their parent company is going to do, if anything. Um, but yeah, uh, Carbonite, they've got plans for single computers, multiple computers. Uh, for just one machine, it's six bucks a month. Um, and you it does give you the option to back up to an external hard drive, which is nice. Um, Carbonite does allow you to encrypt the backups before you send it off to them, but you're trusting their software to do the right thing. I think it's fine. Uh, I actually signed up for, uh, my grandmother for Carbonite way back in the day when she had a Windows PC. Um, and then the other option is Backblaze. Uh, Backblaze is, um, I don't want to say they're new to the scene. They've been around for a few years, but they're newer than Carbonite. Um, and they're, it looks like, yeah, six bucks a month for, for a single PC. Um, I don't know what their multi PC deal is, but, uh, yeah, you can, you can look into those. They've all got their own applications. They, they can set up schedules. They can do encryption. Um, they generally work fine, but keep in mind, you are paying for this and you will continue to pay for this. Somebody's storing your data and those hard drives weren't free. Well, uh, take a step back because I understood what you were saying, but basically you install an app on your phone, on your computer. It just, uh, you pay, you, you sign up for a subscription, you pay them and they handle everything for you. Just like the time machine or windows backup, you have to have this app installed. You can't have it stopped. It will send the stuff for you. Um, they will usually give you two weeks free, which is about the amount of time to, that it takes to do this. Remember, this is where the internet gets important with that up speed, upstream bandwidth. So if you're not gigabit like I am upstream, your cable company is probably giving you like 50, uh, 50 megs upstream. So it's going to take a long time to do it. But you do it once and guess what? You are done. And it will constantly upload as you get more photos or music or whatever it is. And... And you don't have to worry about it. Like you said, this is perfect for a parental unit when you when you are not there. So if you can't uh, troubleshoot, this is, you know what? Just pay it for them. Like just, this will save your sanity. Just pay it for them. Don't let them know how much you're paying. Just pay for them. Put it on a recurring credit card so they don't get hit with the bill at any point and just let it go. Otherwise you're gonna yeah. have to do it. So go go with that, back it up for them. And when something happens, you can restore from backup. My question to you is, does ran does this affect with does this get affected with ransomware? It does not. Uh, so in the the reason is that um, when these companies do backups, they're they're basically doing incremental backups. So if your machine gets hit with ransomware, right, and Carbonite or Backblaze run and they do a full a full upload to the cloud, right? They all your files just got crypto lockered and it shoves up a backup. Now 
the only thing you've backed up is encrypted data. Well, that's super annoying. But what you can do is all these companies have the ability to go back in time, basically, through the list of backups. And you can just say, well, that happened yesterday. I'm just going to go back two days ago and pull down my backups. And you're done. That's it. Now, it, it does take time, right? Because you are pulling down quite literally your entire computer's worth of files back down through the internet. So, like you said, speed is a concern here. Um, but it is way, way cheaper than trying to find and pay the, the Bitcoin fee to unlock your data. Um, backups are the number one solution to ransomware. You can't prevent ransomware. You can only recover from it. So make that process as easy as possible. Also, if you've got kids going off to college, just throw like Carbonite or Backblaze or something on their systems before they go because they're not going to back up. You don't want to rely on good intentions to make sure that their data is safe and, and secure. And if they say, oh, no, I lost my term paper, you can say, no, you didn't. It's right here, um, which is a, a great feeling. I've seen that happen a few times to my friends. I mean, I don't understand how your college age student wouldn't know that there's a weird icon down there, but that's a different story. That's not my. But anyway, so. But again, it's the it's the the set it and forget it type method. You, I would say if you don't want to do that, you have your we'll just recap. You have your hard drive method at about a hundred dollars, and then you have your free method where every single service, whether it's your music or whatever, has some sort of other property to do it. But if something happens, you have to go back and you have to get it. The only thing that I don't think uh, time machine and OA and backup is is safe from ransomware though it depends on how those systems are implemented now with time machine as long as the volume isn't mounted while you get crypto lockered you should be fine i believe time machine does a mount and then backup which is really nice uh but yeah if your backup drive is attached like as a lettered drive in windows then when you get encrypted they could encrypt the backup drive too which it just ruins you um there there are ways around that like you can keep the drive unplugged until you're doing a backup but you have to remember to plug it in every so often yeah. so you can back up um i i actually knew someone who had two hard drives sitting and they had even days and odd days of the month and they would plug in different hard drives so if one got trashed um or if one got you know ransom weird they could just flip over to the other drive and that could work too but Again, it's kind of a complicated system. You're going to have to figure out what works for you. So again, you just have to be careful with that. But anyway, uh, anyway, those are your three options. We're going to leave you with that. If you have any questions, we have a WhatsApp group. And come in there. There are no stupid questions. Come in there. Find us on Twitter. Find us somewhere. We'll throw you in. And uh, we should go from there. But again, this is Backup. And we'll continue from the from with something else next week. So good night, everyone. See you, everyone. Bye. There we go. 30 minutes. That was good. Nice. Uh, let me kill Twitch. Windows 10.